guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to knit lace on your knitting machine. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through a lace pattern that I designed. So I'll be showing you the chart, and then I'll be showing you how to interpret the different symbols for the knitting machine, and walk you through every step so that you can follow along and we can knit the lace together and you'll feel confident knitting lace. The lace that I'm showing you is a lace that I incorporated into my newest design, which is this cute girly dress that I'm wearing. It turned out so cute that I decided to actually size it from baby to girls to tween all the way to adult because I just thought it was so cute for the whole family. So right now I'll do a little show and tell where you can see the lace pattern and how I incorporate it into the design. So first here we have this adorable little baby dress. This is for like a one-year-old so it's super cute and um, as you'll notice this is the smallest scale of the lace pattern. I graded it up as the sizes get bigger and this is the dress for the three-year-old and um, this one actually hand knitted. This pattern is also available as a hand knitting pattern if you're a hand knitter or if you would prefer to knit it that way, but they're exactly the same, just made on the knitting machine versus knitting needles. And then this one is for a five year old, also super cute. And then this, oh, as he's joining us as usual. <laughs> and then this is the adult sized dress, which you can see this has like the largest scale of the lace pattern. This is the one that I'll actually be demoing on the machine today. This is the hardest one, but once you get this one, you can do all the other ones with ease. You can also see that I'm wearing this dress, so it has this like ruffly skirt, it's super cute for twirling. So in this demo today, I'll be making a swatch where I'll be demonstrating all the techniques I used to knit this dress. So if you follow along and you make the swatch, you'll have everything you need to know to knit this dress. And also if you got the pattern, you can refer to this tutorial for all the different techniques used and it will walk you through them. So in this tutorial today, we're going to cover doing this Kiko hem, which makes this really cute detail. You could of course do an e-wrap cast on if you prefer and knit the lace after casting on that way, but I just like this extra girly detail, so I'll be showing you that. Then I'm gonna walk you step by step through this lace pattern and doing all the transfers of these stitches. And just so you know, everything's done manually. I'm using my LK150, which is a manual knitting machine, so I'll be walking you through that. And then when we get up to here, I'm gonna show you how to create this ruffle. So if you are curious how you create this gathered effect, I'll be showing you how to do that. And then we'll be knitting up to the top where it's also finished with a Pico hem that's folded over. So I'll show you how to do that finish, how to whip stitch it onto the inside. And then lastly, I'll be showing you how to attach these I-cord straps that tie into a bow, which are so super cute. So if anything, you're gonna get so much value from this tutorial of how to add feminine touches to your knitting. And you'll also learn how to knit lace, which I love. I have been having so much fun knitting it. If you'd like to get this pattern, you can find it in the links below this video or you can always go to girlyknits.com where I have all my knitting patterns and you can also find me on Ravelry and Etsy where I am girly knits. The yarn that I'll be demonstrating with today is called Lion Brand Low Tide. This is actually the yarn that I used for this adult size dress and this was like the first yarn that I made this dress design in. It's this really cool like chained synthetic material that creates this really beautiful like sturdy lace fabric which I really love and it comes in these beautiful colorways. This is the shell colorway and this is called cove which is more of a pink color which I'll be demonstrating on but just so you know you can use any worsted weight yarn for this design the girls and dress that I'm wearing is using knit picks bravo worsted and for the three-year-old I used a um, super wash merino wool yarn so if you want to use a more luxurious yarn you're of course free to do that as long as you get the gauge any worsted weight yarn you prefer will do in this tutorial I'll also be using this special tool that I have this is a tool from distinctive knits and it has seven prongs on it and that's gonna make transferring our stitches a little bit easier it's really cool you can actually unscrew it and then do custom amounts of needles for whatever you're working on, like I could take it down to five or you could have every other needle selected and then you just screw it back in when you have the number you want. This is a really cool tool, I've been really enjoying it. So I'll demonstrate how to use this, but just know that you don't actually need this tool to do lace. It just you know makes things a little easier and faster sometimes, but you can totally do it with the tools that come with your machine. All right, so we're ready to get started. So thread up some waist yarn and the main yarn you'd like to use and let's get going. All right, so to start, we're gonna cast on 58 stitches, which we wanna cast on evenly on each side. So we'll cast on 29 on each side with our waist yarn, and we're going to be using a tension of T4. So to cast on, we're just going to select every other needle starting at 29. 
Ezzy's here to help as usual. Okay, so we've got that and then we're just going to grab our waste yarn and then we're going to tear it off. And then we're going to hang our cast on comb. Have that centered. And then we're just going to fill in all those other needles, making sure we have 29 on each side. And then we'll just knit some rows of waste yarn. So now for this last row, we're just going to use ravel cord so it'll be easier to remove our waste yarn later. Now we're ready to start knitting with our main yarn. Azu's gotten tangled in my yarn, so we're just gonna see if she'll let us use it, see if she'll be nice. Okay, so we're going to set our counter to zero now that we wanna start counting rows, and then we will knit our Pico hem. So to start, we'll just be knitting four rows. So now that we're at row four, we're going to create the pico by transferring every other stitch to the right of it. We're gonna leave the first two unworked, so we're gonna start at the fourth needle from the right and transfer it to the third, and then repeat that all across the row so every other needle is transferred to the one next to it. So as we end here, we'll just be transferring that last stitch over and we'll still have those last two unworked. And if you're making this dress, that's so that we'll have a salvage stitch for seaming. So we just wanna make sure that these are all in work and then we can go ahead and knit this go row. So now we're at row five and we just wanna knit four more rows to row nine. And then now that we've knit our nine rows, we're ready to fold and join the hem so we can remove all of our hardware. We won't need that anymore. And then we're just going to pick up that first row of our main color and hang it on the needles. So as you reach that last needle, you'll notice that there's one extra that's empty and doesn't have a stitch to hang, and that is normal. So now that we've got all those picked up, we just want to move our work back, all needles to deposition, and we're going to join by knitting across. And just for this row, we're going to go one dial above our main tension, which today is T5. So we were at four, and we're going to go up to six. Just for the Pico, we did um, a dial down. So we're going two dials up from there to T6 to knit across. And again, that was row nine. And now our Pico hem is joined and we are ready to start knitting lace. So now that we're knitting our lace, we are going to change to our main tension of T5. And in the lace chart, we're going to start at row zero. So we'll want to set our row counter back to zero as well so it matches up with our lace chart. The first thing we need to do is take a look at our lace chart. And just to give you a forewarning, the very first row in getting started is the hardest, but I promise after that it is much easier. I think row one is the most challenging row, but if you get through that, um, everything will be a lot smoother. And also I think you'll get the hang of it as you go on. And even if the first row doesn't make sense, just stay with it and it will all come together. Together. So I'm going to walk you through what we're going to do. So basically what we're doing for this very first section here, we'll see the first two stitches on the chart are blank, so we don't do anything there. And then the third one's going to be an eyelet. But um, if you're familiar with knitting, you know that for every eyelet there has to be a decrease because we're not changing the amount of stitches in this row. So we have to make up for that somehow. And the decrease doesn't actually happen until um, many stitches later. And so basically what we're doing, if you can think about it, if I, I don't have an eight prong transfer tool, but if I did have an eight prong transfer tool, I'd basically be like transferring them all over together. Because those slants, those mean that you're transferring a stitch 
that stitch there it's going to the left of it and so this is going to be an eyelet and then the next eight are going to be transferred to the left of it and the decrease is in the center. So what we're actually going to do to approach this chart is we're going to work the double decrease, which is that little airplane looking guy. We're gonna work him first and I will show you how to do that. So we're just gonna go ahead and count. So we have one, two unworked, we have this eyelet and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is the guy that's getting the double decrease. So to do the double decrease, we're going to take our one prong transfer tool we're going to grab the stitch to the left of it and take that off. And then we're going to grab the stitch to the right of it and grab that one. And then we're going to place both of them on that center stitch. So there we just did our double decrease. Okay, so now this is going to make more sense because we have seven stitches that will be transferring one stitch over. And for this, I will use my fancy tool from Distinctive Knits um, because it has seven prongs. And I'll show you how that's done, but don't worry, I'll also show you how to do it if you don't have this tool. So we're just gonna get all seven. And then we're gonna grab them and transfer them over. So now if you take a look at the chart, you'll see it reflects what the chart says. So two unworked eyelet, seven that were transferred over, and then we got this double decrease here. And then the other side is going to be the same. So we're going to take seven stitches, transfer them over, and then we'll have that eyelet where it's supposed to be and then we have a stitch left unworked, and then we're going to be working another eyelet here. So what I'm showing you is the lace repeat where we start with 20 stitches, and then we have an 18 stitch repeat in the center, which will repeat multiple times if you're knitting the dress. Um, this will depend on what size you're making. So you'd be basically repeating that pattern until you get to the last 20 stitches where you work the last 20, which is the chart on the left side. So for this swatch, we're only working the repeated part once, but if you're working the pattern, you just do that over and over again. And when you're working this first row, it's a very good time to check whether everything is lining up. If you have an even number of repeats, the repeat will end at zero. And then if you have an odd number, the center of that chart will end at zero. So that's how you can kind of double check that you're on the right track as you're working this first row of your lace pattern. So basically we're doing the same thing again. Um, and I'll show you a little bit differently this time. We're also gonna start again with our double decrease just to make it a little bit easier. So we have this one stitch left unworked, we have this eyelet, and then we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're gonna do our double decrease on this stitch. And in this case, that looks correct that it's um, right next to zero because that's the middle of my chart. So that is all working out. So we're just gonna do that same transfer again where we grab the left, grab the right, and then hang them on that middle stitch. And then we're gonna transfer these guys over. And this time I'll show you how to do it if you don't have the fancy tool. So we can just do it in segments. So I can transfer these three over. And then I'll transfer these three over. And then one for that seventh one. So as you can see, it's, you know, it just takes a little more time, but you can absolutely do it with the tools you have. So again, we're gonna transfer seven over. So that's three and three and one makes seven. And then at the end of our chart, we'll see again, this is an eyelet. This we're not doing anything to. And then we're doing this again. So again, I'm gonna count, here's the eyelet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have our double decrease here. And like I said, this will be easier after the first row because we'll be able to actually see the pattern forming so we can actually like visualize it a little bit more. But um, yeah, so after you get this row, it's gonna be easier. And then we're gonna transfer those seven over. I'll just make it a little bit quicker by using this tool. And then 
going to transfer those last seven to the left of it. And just know the transfer will always be the same. It's always mirrored, so that makes it a little bit easier. And then we know we worked our chart right because we have an eyelet here and then those three unworked stitches. And we can just kind of look this over again. We can see our two little eyelets here and this one stitch two eyelets here in this one stitch, everything looks good. And for some of these rows, I just like pulling all of my needles out to D position before I knit them, just to make sure everything's on there. Sometimes things get mixed around when you're pushing needles back and forth or they can go out of work towards the back. So I just like to do that just to make sure that everything's good. And then now we're ready to knit our row. So we're just gonna knit this row and the next row. All of our odd rows will just be knitting so we can always once we do our lace work, we can just go back and forth and then start the next row. This would also be a good time to hang your weights. So just go ahead and hang those. And then we'll just work those next two rows. Awesome, okay, so we've just knit our first two rows. We can see there's these two little eyelets here and then there's an eyelet on the end, and this is gonna help visually guide us for the rest of our rows as well. So for this next row, row two, we're basically going to be doing the same thing, but this time we're transferring seven stitches over instead of eight, and on each side, so it's, they're gonna decrease every time, so we'll use a different um, number of prongs when we're transferring. But for this one, it just, hopefully this will make you see it a little more clearly, because I'm just gonna use this tool and show you another way of working that double decrease. It produces the same results as the way I showed you with the one prong tool, if you prefer that, or you can do what I'm going to show you, which is exactly the same. So let's take a look at the chart. We're on row two, and we'll see that there's one, two, three stitches left unworked and then there's an eyelet, and then we're going to be transferring one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the seven, I'm counting the arrow because um, we're transferring that stitch over. I know last time, since we worked that one, I wasn't counting it, but hopefully you can um, follow along and understand. And then you'll also see this double decrease. It's always gonna be on the same stitch. So as, as we're working up the pattern, you'll see that we're always double decreasing on that stitch. So you could even mark it if you wanted to, if that's helpful. So we're just gonna go ahead and count one, two, eyelet, and then we're transferring seven over. So I'm gonna use my seven prompt transfer tool. And then we're going to grab those and transfer them over. And then, as I said, the other side is mirrored, so on the other side of our double decrease, we're gonna grab seven stitches and then transfer them over. So you can see we did this a little bit differently this time, where we transferred one stitch at a time to create our double decrease. But as you'll notice, it's the same effect. So now we have three stitches on this needle from transferring all these guys over and then transferring all these guys over. And you'll see the way that they're layered. The left one is the first one, and then it's the right one, second, and then the original stitch is first. And you get that same order if you did the double decreases. Like I said, I know it sounds a little backwards because we started with the left, but that creates it so that the left is last and the right is second, and we just wanna be consistent with that. I think, I'm not actually sure that it looks different, but I'm guessing it looks nicer if you stay consistent every time you do the double decrease. So there we go, we did that already. And you can kind of see this eyelet stitch forming. If you look at the chart, you'll see these eyelets go diagonal, so I can see that they're going diagonal, which is great. So we're gonna look at the chart again. We see we have an eyelet here, and then we have three stitches left unworked. And then again, we're gonna transfer seven. And then we're gonna transfer the seven to the left of it. And just so you know, using this transfer tool, it's not as sturdy as your normal tool, so it takes some getting used to, but it is pretty cool. All right, so we did those guys. And then for this last one, I'll show you what to do if you don't have this tool. Again, I think it's just visually easier to see what's happening with that tool, but I'll show you how to do it without it. So. On this one, we have our eyelet there, and then we have three knot work stitches, and then we have another 
eyelet and then we're going to be transferring seven again. So this time it is a little bit easier if you start with the double decrease. I can actually spot it there and then just go ahead and work it like I showed you before. And then we're just going to be transferring six stitches over since seventh you would count that one was transferred over. So we're going to do three and three. So we can just use our three prong transfer tool to do three and three. And that will create the eyelet where it's supposed to be. We can see we have these three unworked stitches, the eyelet on either side. And then we're just going to transfer six stitches over here. And then if we're looking at our chart, we'll see that we end with an eyelet and then four stitches. So that all looks good. And again, if you're confused at all, just reference the chart. It should reflect what your knitting looks like on your bed. And so, you know, you can always see like, does this look right? And also you'll just notice patterns too forming. You can see like the eyelets look like they're in the right spot. So uh, we're just gonna, again, I'm gonna pull all these out to deposition just my preference, and then we'll knit two rows. All right, so now we're on row four and we have something a little different happening here. We're starting to knit an additional eyelet on the side of this eyelet. So just looking at the chart, you'll see that there's one, two stitches left unworked, and then we have an eyelet and then we have um, a decrease that's right next to it. So in this case, this is actually a little bit simpler. So this one, we're just transferring that stitch and doubling it over to decrease there. And that's just a much simpler way <laughs> of what we're doing of just eyelet and decrease. And that little leg there indicates that it's a decrease, whereas the slants just mean it's transferring to the needle next to it, but it's not a decrease. Okay, and then so we're gonna have another eyelet here and then just so you get like the hang of this pattern, know that each time we're going to be transferring one less stitch. So last time we used our seven prong tool and then this time we'll be doing six prongs and then it'll just keep decreasing from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my six prong transfer to transfer these guys over. And then mirror that on the other side. And then we'll see that we have an eyelet here and then we are going to work another eyelet and this time it's decreasing to the right where the first one was to the left. So we're gonna do an eyelet here and do our decrease here. And then we have one stitch left unworked and also you can see this pattern forming. This one will remain unworked. And then, then we have an eyelet on the other side. Everything's mirrored. That's going to the left. And then again, we want to transfer six stitches over. And I'll show you with our two and three prong tool this time. Actually, I use need all my tools, let's be honest. Okay, so first we're gonna use a one prong tool and we're gonna identify our double decrease. So I see that here. So we're going to work that first. And then we're gonna transfer three stitches over. and then the other two. And again, I hope that's making sense. There's five when you don't count the double decrease. So then we're going to transfer three over on to mirror that on the other side. And then those two. And then again, we'll have an eyelet and then we'll have this guy creating an eyelet decreasing to the right, one stitch unworked, and then an eyelet decreasing one stitch to the left. And then I'll use this guy again, just for speed. So we'll transfer those six stitches over and then these six stitches over. And then at the end of our chart, we'll see we have an eyelet, and then we're gonna do that last additional eyelet where we go one over to 
to the right. Again, we can always check against the chart, make sure everything looks correct. I'm gonna pull these out. So then we can just take a look at our work and see that everything, if you see anything off, you might have made a mistake, but it should be like a mirrored pattern. So just make sure to look at your work every row and make sure that everything looks good. And just to take a look at what we're knitting here, this is of course the wrong side, but if we look at the right side, we'll see what this pattern looks like. Those um, double decreases down the center, they're creating this beautiful pattern here. And the reason that we're transferring so many stitches over, if you're wondering like, why is she doing that? <laughs> it's actually because it creates a bigger scallop. So the more stitches that you transfer over um, to do this double decrease in the center, like the bigger the scallop's going to be. And I love a big scallop and it just looks so cute with like the pico and everything. And so that's why we're doing that. You'll see some simpler lace patterns out there that don't do that, but um, it's for that actually decorative edge that I really love to do when I design lace patterns. Okay, so now we're on to row six and it's going to be um, similar as the last one, but we know that we're going to be transferring one last stitch So I'm just gonna go down to five here, and then we're gonna start off. We've got three unworked and Then we have an eyelet formed by transferring this stitch over to the one to the left of it and then I'm gonna use my five prong tool Transfer these guys over and then on the other side do the same and then I'm going to transfer this guy over here, and then we have three left unworked. One, two, three, and we're creating an eyelet transferred to the left, and then five. I'll show you that last one. So we're going to transfer this guy over, one, two, three. Transfer that guy over. And then again, I'm gonna do, I'll show you without that tool, we'll use, do our double prong decrease. And the reason I'm doing the double decrease first is because we just, we need a space to to move all of these stitches. Otherwise we'd have nowhere to move them. So we have to work the decrease first so that we can move them over. So this time there's four, so we can just do two and two with our two prong tool. And do two and two over here. And then we're gonna end this guy and then just to double check we have four left empty there so just pull these guys out and work the next two rows now we're on to row eight and I know that this time we're gonna need the four prong transfer tool <laughs> as you, she cracks me up as you can stand on the machine okay so row eight, so we have four left unworked and then we're gonna do that eyelet decreasing to the left of it. And then we're going to transfer four over. Four over. And then again, I will show you about that tool. So we're going to do an eyelet here, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then eyelet here. And then for this middle one, I'll show you. So this time we actually, it is easier to use our one and three prong transfer tool because we're just going to do our double decrease at the center, which hopefully you can see. And then we can use our three prong because we just have three stitches to transfer over on either side. And then we have our empty stitch for an eyelet, and then we're gonna transfer this guy over. We have five, <laughs> she cracks me up. Five's left unworked, and then we're going to do our eyelet here. 
And then I'll just show you one more time using our one and three prong. We're just going to do, oops, easy. Double decrease at the center. Then we'll do transfer three. Oops. Transfer three. And then we have highlight at the end. And then we know we did everything correctly because we have five left. Okay, so again, I just like to move these out. And then we're going to All right, so now we're on row 10. And again, just looking at our work, make sure everything looks right. And so for row 10, we actually won't need our um, special tool anymore until later. So we can put that away and we can use our three prong transfer tool with one on the other side. And we have this um, new diamond coming in on starting on this row, which we'll encounter in the middle of the chart. But to start, we have five stitches left unworked. And then we're going to have an eyelet that goes decreases to the left of it. And then for this guy, this is the first time we can actually use our tools and it just gets a little bit easier. We're gonna transfer three to the center and three to the center. And yeah, it starts to go a little bit quicker, gets a little bit easier. We still got this guy here. And so now we're introducing this new diamond. So we're just gonna look at our chart again and we're gonna count one, two, three left unworked stitches. And then that next one is going to be an eyelet with a decrease to the left. So we're just going to grab that stitch, transfer it to the left. And then I see on my chart, I have two unworked and then we have another eyelet, move into the left. And then we have our double decrease again where we can just use this three prong tool. And of course, if you want to work the double decrease in the center first and then use your two prong tool to transfer the remainder over, you can of course do that too. And then we have another eyelet here. And then again, this is repeating the same thing. So we have one, two, three left unworked. And then we have eyelet with a decrease to the left and then one, two. And then we have eyelet to the left and then we'll do our transfer. And just as you may have noticed that I'm doing this, when I grab these three stitches and I transfer them over, I make sure if you've seen, <laughs> if you've gotten used to the way I do things, I usually pull them out to deposition after doing um, a decrease as I did with all these other guys. But because I know that I'm transferring three stitches on the left side too, if I pull it all the way out, it's going to be hard to transfer it over. So I make sure just to pull it out a teensy bit so that when I grab these three on the left, it's easier to put it on the needle and uh, it goes smoothly. And, that, and then at that point, I'll pull it all the way out <laughs> since that's my preference. But then we'll do another eyelet here. And looking at the chart, you'll see the left is slightly different from the right. And that's because when I designed this dress pattern, there had to be selvage stitches on either side to seam the dress. And so they're a little bit different. So just make sure to pay attention to the chart. So you'll see at the end, we have one, two, three unworked. And then we have an eyelet getting transferred over to that second to last stitch on the left. And again, just pull these out. And here we go. So now we're on to row 12 of the chart. And I know this time I'm going to be using my two prong tool for that double decrease. So I'm going to take a look at the chart. We have one, two left on worked, and then we're going to start the diamond over on this side as well. So we're going to do that third stitch transfers over to the fourth stitch to do a decrease to create the eyelet. And then we have one, two unworked. This eyelet goes over here and then their center. Now we're just moving two and two. And then we have our eyelet here. And then we are going to count one, two. And then you'll see that the eyelet actually starts two stitches over. So this is where the decrease is, this is where the eyelet is. So we wanna grab this stitch and transfer it over here to create our decrease. And if you're looking at the chart, you'll see these two are left on work. Just make sure you 
work the eyelet. It's kind of like the eyelets are coming from the center and going out. So then we have this one left unworked, and then we have an eyelet here going to the left, and then we have two unworked, and then we have this eyelet going to the left, and then we're doing two and two. And then got our eyelet here. And then here, I mean, I'm so used to knitting this pattern that I just look at it visually, but I actually can see, oh, the eyelet here, and I know that they're going diagonally out, so I'm just gonna, I can see like the next eyelet will be next to it, so I'm just gonna grab that, transfer it over, grab this guy, transfer it over. If you make this enough time, maybe you'll get the hang of it too. <laughs> Otherwise, of course, you can refer to the chart. And then two left unworked, this guy transfers over. And then on this last one, I'll just show you if you prefer to do your double decreases this way, we're just grabbing those and then one on either side. And then got an eyelet here. And then at the very end, we're going to count one, two, and then we'll see the eyelet actually starts two over and then transfers to the one to the right. Okay. So now we're on row 14 of the pattern and hopefully this is one of like the easier rows so hopefully things start to flow a little bit smoother and these ones are a little bit simpler because you, the next few rows because you only have to use your one prong transfer tool so I'll go through this one just a little more quickly so we're gonna um, so we're row 14 and we're gonna have one two three unworked and then eyelet transfers over and then we have one two and then we have this guy transferring over and then this is just one double decrease at the center. So I can just go ahead and do that. And then we have an eyelet here. And then got this eyelet here transferring over. Again, I can just see this visually. And then this one, of course, if you wanna do it the way we've been doing it with the multi-prong transfer tools, you just transfer the right to the left left to the right, it has the same effect as the other way I showed you. And then that transfers over. Our double decrease. All right, and this one I actually feel more comfortable just leaving, I don't have to bring them all out to deposition, but do make sure that all of these needles are in work. Sometimes they go out of work, so you just wanna make sure that you do that before you knit the row. And we can move these weights up too. Again, we're just admiring our lace pattern. So beautiful. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to row 16. So again, I'm gonna count four and then do this eyelet. And then this time there's no double decrease. We're just doing an eyelet that goes to the left here, eyelet that goes to the right there. So this row is even easier than the last one. We're just doing these one prong transfers. that those all in work, and then we'll two rows. So now row 18, um, you'll kind of see we're reaching the, the maximum width of our <laughs> uh, diamond here. So after that, we'll actually be moving back inward. I don't know if you guys think about lace patterns this way, but this is the way I think about them. <laughs> like they're this journey through where the eyelids are going. So. Um, so we're going to grab this guy, transfer it over, and then we're going to have another double decrease. Again, it's like aligned with all these other double decreases we've been doing. And that creates an eyelet on either side, but there's no additional eyelets there. And then this one goes to the right, this one goes to the left, and we've got our double decrease.
I'll just do this the other way where I do the left first, or the right first and the left. And then this guy comes out and see, I told you it gets easier, right? I hope you agree. I hope it's going well for you. <laughs> um, it can be a little tricky getting started. I know I had to, you know, undo and redo a lot of things at first, but hopefully you get the hang of it. And once you master this, you're gonna be a lace knitting pro and you can do all sorts of things. Okay, so row 20. So this one is where the diamond is coming back. So again, we're just gonna look at the chart. We have one, two, three, unworked. And then we're gonna hop over two and then create an eyelet with a decrease to the right. And then after that, we're gonna count another one, two that are left unworked and then hop two. <laughs> And then an eyelet that transfers to the right. I don't know if you have a different way of reading your charts. If you do, of course, if that works for you, this is how I see them. But um, and then we have one, two, three left unworked. And then we have an eyelet that goes to the left. And then we have one, two left unworked, eyelet that goes to the left. And then one, two, three, hop two, eyelet that goes to the right. And then one, two, eyelet that goes to the right and then one two three and then one two eyelet that goes to the left and then one two three hop two and then one two hop like a bunny <laughs> and then one two three And then at the end of that row, we have one, two, and an eyelet that moves to the left. So now we're on row 22, and hopefully by now you've gotten the hang of this. Um, until we get to row 32, things are pretty straightforward. I think you'll be able to understand the chart. It's just eyelets with decreases to the stitch next to them and also some double decreases. But I think if you, by now, you should be able to follow the chart and follow along. So I will just um, speed this up a little bit and catch up with you again on row 32. All right, so now I've reached row 32 and you can really see the lace forming now. It looks really beautiful. Um, we can even remove our waistern if we want so we can get an even fuller picture of what it looks like. So we can see that looks really nice. We have this adorable little pico at the bottom and um, you'll need to steam your swatch before it really opens up and <laughs> it looks as nice as this. This was heavily steamed. But um, yeah, hopefully it looks good and you get a very clear idea of what your lace pattern looks like. So now we're on row 32 and for row 32, we're bringing back the multi-prong transfer. <laughs> so I'll just walk through it with you. Taking a look at row 32, we have one, two left unworked and then we have an eyelet that gets transferred to the left of it. And then we're going to have a six stitch transfer. So I will get my tool ready with six. And of course you can also do the double decrease in the center first. You can just count over to see which stitch that's going to be and then transfer the remaining five stitches over, which are all the slashes. And again, you count five slashes for how many additional ones you transfer over or if you're doing them all together, like I'm gonna show you first, you would count that middle decrease. So we've got the eyelet and then we're gonna grab our six and transfer them over. And if you did mark your center double decrease before, it will be the same one as we had down here. It's a little more challenging to see now, so you could even, yeah, just count on the chart the number of stitches over and then count your needles just to make sure. But um, if you do, if you reflect it on the other side, visually it should look correct because you'll see the diagonal eyelets forming again, which you can see if you look here, there was an eyelet here, and now there's an eyelet here, eyelet here, eyelet here. You can see 
that looks correct. I mean, even if you were to follow this column, you can see that this is centered here. So I'll show you that using our regular transfer tools. So once we did that, we're gonna see we have an eyelet here that decreases to the right, and then we have one stitch left unworked, and then we have an eyelet that goes to the left. And then again, if we just wanna go ahead and count, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's gonna be our stitch that we're doing our double decrease. And again, because I'm doing an odd number of repeats, this also is a way to double check because I'm at zero and I know that my double decrease is right in the center of that chart, so that makes sense that it would be there. So we're just gonna do our single prong double decrease. And then we have five to transfer over on either side. Just do two and three. And then we've got an eyelet here, one left unworked, eyelet here. And I'll use my fun tool again. Once I know that it's six, we're just gonna transfer those guys over. And those. Okay, and then we got an eyelet on the end there. I will actually just pull all these out again. Then we'll knit those two rows. And then so for row 34, it's again very similar to how we started. We're basically doing one less needle for our transfer each time. So again, we've got this guy. And we're gonna transfer five over to the center five over to the center. And then we got the one. And the one. And then I'll show you this last one without the tool. We can now see our double decreases at the center, and then we'll just have four that need to transfer over. All right, so hopefully that's making sense. Um, as I mentioned before, it's just you're doing one less transfer each time, so hopefully you're getting in the rhythm of it. And so I will continue and then I'll catch up to you on row 46. Okay, so now we're at row 46 and we can see this looks really cool. And from here on, we are doing 
this eyelet column here. And when you're knitting your dress, you can actually make this, you know, as long, as short as you want. Um, it is a little bit see-through. I mean, I think it's cute. I don't really <laughs> mind it. But um, if you wanted to be a little more modest and not have those little holes, you could, of course, not do them or make them shorter or longer if, if you find them pretty and you want to wear like a slip underneath or something. But I think it's just a really cool effect to have those columns of eyelets. So from here on, like these rows are just knitted exactly the same. It's just repeating the same thing over and over and basically we're doing a double decrease at our center here where we've already established this um, column of double decreases so of course you can count on the chart or you can just visually look at it and we just want to do a double decrease so there's an eyelet on either side and that's it And of course, if you prefer doing it this way, one at a time, you can do that instead of, I think the other one's a little bit faster since it's like one maneuver and it's just a little easier not having to do the transfer to a needle twice, but same result. So we're just gonna continue doing that until row 66. So now we're at row 66 and this will be our last eyelet row for these eyelet columns. And after this, we're just knitting until whatever length we want to. If you're knitting the dress, it'll tell you how many inches to make it depending on what size you're making. But basically we just want to knit the full length of the skirt before we do our decreases. So I'll just add some more rows and then we can move on. So I've just knitted to row 80 just for this swatch and one fun thing I thought I'd show you is how to steam block your knitting. I actually found when I was making the dresses it was sort of easier to do it while it was still on the machine before I did my decreases because really just the lace part needs to be steamed and not the full dress. Maybe the pico edging, I did steam that a bit in the I-cord straps. But if you um, would prefer, you could do it while on the machine. So I'll just show you what I did in case you wanna do that too. So I have this fun little portable steamer here. I love this thing, it's so great for traveling. I use it all the time <laughs> and so much better than an iron. So if you don't have one, I would totally recommend one. I can link up to the one I bought in case you're interested. But um, yeah, so basically we just want to steam our swatch. And with this yarn in particular, you can actually get close to it and it's fine. I did use this on another acrylic where it actually damaged the acrylic, it like melted it. So I would definitely test a swatch before going too crazy with your steamer. If anything, you can just steam it from a, a few inches apart so you make sure not to damage your yarn. But this one actually was really good. And I noticed after steam, the lace just like really blossomed and looked a lot better. So you can really see what it's going to look like and it will drape beautifully. And even do the other side. Make sure we get that pico edge. So as you can see now, you really see the lace pattern and it's much more visible and it's not curling anymore. So yeah, this um, I really love this yarn because it blocked so beautifully. And we can also even check out the right side of our knitting. See, that looks really cool. It should look exactly like this. Those really cool diamonds and those double decreases are gorgeous. So now we're ready to do the ruffle part, which is super fun. Okay, so to do the ruffle, we're actually going to scrap off with waist yarn and rehang the stitches. And that I find is the easiest way to do this. And in case you're wondering what scrap off means, it just means that you're going to knit some waist yarn and then remove your knitting from the machine so that you can rehang your knitting. So we're gonna keep the yarn attached actually to our knitting so we can just put it over on this notch over here to put it out of the way and then we'll put our waist yarn in. That way we can just keep continue knitting with our yarn when we rehang it and there's no need to break the yarn and reattach it or anything like that. So I'm going to get our waist yarn and then Drop off. And a fun thing.
thing, in case you haven't discovered this yet, usually you do by default, but if you want to take the yarn out and then there's no yarn threaded in your carriage and you just move your carriage across, that will just take it off. Super simple. So we still have our yarn attached here and now we're going to rehang our knitting. So when we rehang our knitting, what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to hang one stitch and then we're going to double up our stitches all across the row and then end with one stitch for our selvage stitch that we'll use to seam. So we'll still have our wrong side facing and we're going to end up with 30 stitches. So I know that I will start at 15 and end at 15. I will go ahead and grab our first stitch here and hang it on the 15th stitch. And then to double up, we're gonna use our one prong transfer tool. We're gonna to grab the next stitch and the next stitch and hang it on a needle. And we're just going to do that all across this row pretty simple and this is really fun for doing gathers. So we're coming across our last stitches so we're just going to do one last decrease and then we'll hang the last stitch which is a little tricky, but it's right there. Okay, so now we have that whole row. So there should be two stitches on every needle except for the very first and last. And now we can join our yarn in our carriage again and just continue where we left off. And we're going to transfer to T4 and then we're just going to knit across. And I should say, if you are knitting the dress, you'll want to reset your counter to zero. So that was row one, because we're going to be counting from scratch again. And then we can hang our weights. And then we'll just continue knitting. So for this part, we're just knitting for the entire bodice. And then next, I will be showing you how to do the pico finish. Okay, so now that we have some of our knitting done, we can remove the waist yarn, which is actually really fun to remove. So to do that, we're just gonna start at the end of it and just wind it up into a ball. So I'm at my last row here, and as you'll see, it just kind of magically comes out. Yay! So that's so cool. So now we've created this ruffle here. So if you ever want to do a ruffle on anything, you know what to do. And now we are going to do a pico finish. So similar to how we did our pico for our edge, it's very similar. It's just that we're going to have to seam it on when we finish. But basically we're just going to be creating an eyelet row where every other stitch is an eyelet. Take a look in the pattern because if you have an odd number of stitches, you'll want to start on the third needle and transfer to the second. But because we're working with an even number of stitches, for the swatch we have here, we can do it as we did before, where we start on the fourth needle and transfer it to the third. But if it's an odd number, you'll just make up for it by leaving just one unworked stitch on the edge before you start your eyelets. Okay, so we've just finished that row. So we're just going to work across this row and then after we do an eyelet row, we want to work three more rows. So one, two, three. And then for this very last row, we're going to prepare for doing a chain cast off. And we're going to make it really, really loose. And so to do that, we're going to go to our maximum tension, which on LK150 is T9, so that these are super loose, because this we're actually going to be folding over and seaming. And on the dress, you want to make sure that that's loose so you can fit it over your bust and everything. So we want that to be stretchy. So we're just doing this last row at T9. And when you do a chain cast off, just make sure that you're going from right to left because when we start our chain bind off, we're gonna start at our right and then it's easiest to move to the left. So 
To do the chain cast off, we're going to grab our latch tool and we can remove the weights. And then we're just gonna grab that very last stitch, remove it from the needle. And then we're gonna grab that next stitch in the hook and we're gonna pull it through the first one. Then we're gonna grab the next stitch, pull it through, next stitch, pull it through. And you're just gonna repeat that to the end of the row. And because we used T9, these stitches were really big and so it just be creates bigger loops and bigger loops equate to um, a looser bind off. And of course, if you wanted to bind off a different way, you could just, yeah, you just want to ensure that it's loose. I've also done this with knitting needles with like a really large knitting needle. I like doing that with knitting, just using like a, a size 11 or something like that. <laughs> but this is like a really quick way too. And also if you're, you know, just knitting a swatch or you're just, uh, you know, doing like a little quick thing where you just want to bind off, this is a great method because it's super quick. So we're just getting to that last stitch there. And then this part, we just want to pull our yarn through and we want to leave enough yarn so that we can seam it to the inside of our knitting. And for that, we just need about double the width. So I can do that and then cut my yarn, pull it through. And now I'll be showing you how to seam this to the inside of the knitting. So we're just gonna grab a tapestry needle. All right, so I've got my tapestry needle here. I'm gonna thread my tail through. Isn't this so fun? My nail polish matches the yarn. I mean, I kind of planned it, I kind of didn't. I don't know, it was a nail polish I had and it was also the yarn I was using, but it's so fun. So I hope you enjoy that too. <laughs> okay, all right, so to seam our Pico edge, we are going to count five purl ridges up. Okay, and then you can start from here where the eyelid is. So the purl ridges that like face up, I guess we can call them like the upside down smiley face. There's probably a better word for that. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, but we want to attach it to the stitch below it, which is like, we'll call that the smiley face. So the one that's facing down. So that's going to be the row along which we're going to seam the bind off to. So let me just fold this over here. We're just going to mark that guy and then we're going to come through him. And then we're going to go through the cast off edge here, just like that outer loop right there. And then just to make sure that everything's lining up, I can see that I picked up a stitch here and I go along that column. We just kind of skipped that first solid stitch there. And then making sure that aligns up, you just want to go through the side of that bound off stitch. And we just want to do that all across the row for every stitch. Sometimes I do every other stitch, but I noticed for this design in particular, if you want it to be, you want it to be stretchy. So it makes it stretchier if you go through every other stitch. It's not quite as stretchy every other stitch. So this will help with that. And then you can just kind of see the, the stitch next to it, but just in case you lose track, you can always do that counting system again of counting five stitches up because that's the row. And then so you can count from the eyelet or you can count the row next to it, which has the upside down ones. But just make sure that you're going along the same row. All right, so we're approaching the end here. Just got a couple stitches left. And then we're done, yay. So as you can see, it just creates this really cute finish this adorable Pico edge and as I mentioned before if you give it a little bit of steaming it can flatten out a little bit but also for this dress like once it's on the body and it's a little stretched out it will lay a little bit flatter but it's also like a little ruffly and that's cute too. So yay now we've got that done and then the very last thing we want to do 
is knit the straps. It's kind of like a mini dress we have here. It's sort of cute. Maybe it could be for a doll or something. All right, so now we're knitting our straps and this is a super fun technique. We're gonna be attaching the straps directly onto the dress and knitting them. So first you just wanna mark exactly where you would like your strap and there's guidance in the pattern for that. And then you're just going to pick up some stitches. So it depends on how wide you want your strap to be. I'll show you a strap using six stitches for I cord. So we're just gonna put our carriage over there. And then we're just gonna pick up the row directly below where we did our seaming. So I see those pearl bumps right below and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab from that row. So I'm gonna grab those three and then the three next to it for six and then we can just knit directly on here and just a little tip if you're doing I-cord it's nice to have it next to the counter so that you don't have to move your carriage too far we'll just go to zero and Another tip when you're knitting your straps, um, just keep track of your rows so you can make each strap the same. You can measure the first one, but then after that you can just copy what you did for this one. So we're going to thread up our yarn and we're gonna do a tension of 2.5 and I'm going to move the right lever on my carriage from the triangle to the circle so that it knits an I-cord. So that means that when it goes this way, it's not going to knit, creating I-cord. And so we just need to leave a little bit of a tail and then we're going to go across that row, just go a few rows. And then after you get going, it's helpful to hang a weight. And then you're just knitting an I-cord. So as you can see, that looks awesome. And then when we're done knitting our strap, we just want to bind off. And um, even though you won't really see this, I'll just show you a prettier way of binding off. If you want it to look nice and more like hand knitting, what you want to do is transfer the second to last stitch over to the last stitch and then bind it off. And then again, if you transfer the left to the right before binding it off, it's just gonna look nicer. But of course, you can bind off however you choose. This is how I did mine. And then that last guy, I'm just gonna pull him through. And then can cut that. our yarn through and then as you can see it just makes that nice edge and then what I did for my straps is I just wove this in so I just wove that into the back of the I-cord and then I tied the end of the I-cord in a knot because I think that looks cute. And then just like leave a little bit there. I think that looks cute. And then what I do is I cut this tail so that you won't see it. So I actually unthread it to the end of the knot and then I cut it and then you won't have to worry about it poking out or anything like that. And then the very last thing I'll show you is this is another technique that I use in this dress pattern just to make the straps lie a little bit flatter. So if, if it's like that, you'll see the pico kind of flops down and it just looks nicer if this is the strap is tacked down to the pico, you see it like lays nicer. So I'll just show you how I do that. And basically I'm just going to use this tail that we left here when we started our I-cord and I'm going to seam it to the inside of the pico. So I'm gonna line this up. It's about like three stitches up, I would say. And then I'm seaming it to like the second row of uh, the inside of the pico here. So I'm just gonna grab a stitch there. Of course, you can do this however you like, but hopefully you find this helpful. 
And then I'm going to go through the, the row that aligns. You can just kind of put it up there and then attach it like that. So we're gonna go through these two V's, that knit stitch, and then the next knit stitch here. We're just gonna do that all the way across the front of that strap to the inside of the pico. So yeah, it just it's just a little thing that little detail that helps. And then when I get here, I like to knot it inside here. And then I would just go ahead and weave that tail through the stitches down here and then into the side seam of the dress and then you won't see any of it on the inside because it will go to the sides and so that will look really nice and as you can see that's helpful in making the pico edge and the strap look a little bit nicer so here's a miniature version of the dress i hope you enjoy this pattern and if you make the dress please make sure to share your project share photos on ravelry or send them to me i love seeing what you guys create I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn, please let me know. And if you'd like more tutorials in the future, please subscribe to my channel and you'll be updated on what's new. And of course, if you'd like to find me, I'm Girly Knits on Instagram and Facebook and on Ravelry. And you can also find me at girlyknits.com and I'll see you next time.